In 2020, we set out on our biggest challenge yet. After two big live events in 2019, we decided to attempt a nationwide UK tour. But as we all know, none of us could have predicted what would have happened. And just a few short weeks before the tour, a worldwide pandemic meant putting a halt to everything. So now, after two years of waiting, the tour is back. That's right, in February and March of 2022, we'll be putting on a live, freshly grounded show in Birmingham, Manchester, and finally, our flagship show in London's Aldwych Theatre. And tickets are on sale now. You can grab them by going to freshlygrounded.com forward slash tour. This is by far the riskiest thing we have ever done on a personal, logistical, and definitely financial level. And so we need your support now more than ever. And we know that the world is still in a state of uncertainty, but we're going to make sure that the event is as comfortable and safe for all attendees as possible. From working with venues to ensure hygiene standards are high, to making face masks mandatory for all of our staff and volunteers, and keeping an eye on government guidelines, we are not leaving any stone unturned. So join us just a few short weeks before Ramadan 2022 for our biggest project yet. And welcome to a freshly grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to freshly grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said welcome to freshly grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Thank you for joining me, Mr. Adam Afghan. Mr. Oh, Afghan. Hello, good evening. Mr. Country of Afghan. Yeah. Afghanistan. <clears throat> good evening, Mr. Uh, Mr. Faisal, country of... Uh, Chowdhury. Chowdhury? Don't know where country that is. Um, I wonder what Chowdhury means. I was thinking chow, like chowder. That's some food, isn't it, from France? Chowder, yeah. Is it from France? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder what my name means. Should we Google it? We're gonna do that, shall we? I might. <coughs> I wanted to do one of these. You know, you're really like thirsty, and you're like. <sighs> yeah, I, oh, I do that all the time. I love that. And my son goes ah when I just pop it off. How do we meaning? I hope it's something good. So do I. <laughs> Holder of four. Holder of four. Well, yeah, like the number four. Chowdhury. Chowdhury is a surname and a hereditary title of Bengali, Hindu and Urdu origin. It means the holder of four. In modern times, it is common South Asian surname, both males and females. Holder of four, though. What? Holder of four. What? Right? I never imagined those words to go together in a sentence. I don't, I don't know what you're holding. Are you holding anything of that as four? It's the number four. So it's that's four. very odd. That's very strange. I'm trying to think if there's anything... What other sentences make zero sense, but word, the words exist? What do you mean? Like, um... Like an oxymoron. No, it's not an oxymoron. It makes no sense. It's just four words that go together. But the yeah. t together, the words can make sense. Yeah. Because you can put the at the beginning of a sentence. You can put holder after the. You can put of after holder. Yeah. And you can put for after... Yeah. But then when you put them all together, yeah. right, there's no meaning to that word. You know what? It's, it's, it's one word. Whatever. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, either. that's a good point. Actually. Whatever. Whatever doesn't make sense. Yeah, whatever, whatever, like whatever. Like what yeah, does that yeah. mean? Whatever. I don't understand. Well, I was thinking that like, we could make one. Do you want to make one? Um, well, like... Uh, Freshly the... grounded doesn't really make any sense. That's true. That <laughs> exists as well. <laughs> but okay, true. Um, I'm just looking at words I can see. Um, Shelf, no. Um, uh, uh, the great... Oh, you're doing a big one. Okay. My mind doesn't go that far. The great... No, it doesn't. Um, no, mine doesn't either. The great... Um, the holder of four. Wow. Uh, I don't okay, let's do another. So the giver of nine. Not yeah. As a <laughs> That's the only <laughs> thing I said. The, the giver of nine. Giver of, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. This is t it's it's in, we're, it's morning time, <laughs> and my brain has a switch. I've only had one coffee, and I had almond milk. I don't know I'm why. Still I, don't know why. I, I try almond milk. Almond. The holder of almond milk. Um, no, I no, I don't know. I don't know. The the skin of jam. Is that, that doesn't make any no, sense. That doesn't make any sense either. Um, <laughs> anyway, you had a coffee with almond milk this I morning. I had almond milk. Yeah, nice. It was I had a. Co I had my coffee with uh, coffee mate. Coffee 
What do you mean? Coffee mate. What are you saying? You're saying two words together, which... Uh... <laughs> oh, no. Coffee mate. Yeah. As in like, all right, mate. Or no. coffee mate. As in what, like... You think that I hire a mate to have my coffee with every morning? You said, you, you said I'm my coffee with coffee mate. You, I thought you said you had your coffee with coffee mate. Oh, like, like you think I'm saying, oh, I have my coffee with coffee, mate. Yeah, exactly. That's but have I ever called you mate? No. What are you saying? Yeah, there's a there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a brand you... called Coffee Mate and it's powdered milk. And instead of using milk uh, or our milk, yeah. uh, Coffee Mate is also a dairy-free alternative to milk. Oh, uh, really? And it's powdered. Uh, it's like a powder you put in to your coffee and it makes your coffee creamy and milky. It's a creamer. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. For me. So I have my coffee with Coffee Mate. Okay, um, I was going to say, having it with some type of dairy is the original coffee experience, I feel. Oh, yeah, definitely. Once, once I mix it up with a bit of oat milk, a bit of almond milk, a bit of soy, it, um, it's not the authentic experience, I feel. I feel cheated almost. Have like, you had any cortados in your time since I the do. last... I love a cortado. I mean, we discussed that, but yeah. since our last discussion... Last on cortado, yeah. Oh, you I did, yeah. I had about three. Um, in one day? I, t- I think I have two max in one day. They're quite strong. Yeah. I had a cortado... With our Rick beans, of course. Mm. Uh, we we just do the same podcast every time. Yeah, we do. do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> we did. Yeah. It's just the same one, but at different... It's di- it's just at different bizarre. times, at yeah. Different we had different haircuts. <laughs> yeah, different, we wear different clothes. Yeah. It's the same podcast. Uh, I did have that, though, yeah. Interesting. The other day, two, two days ago, it took exactly again. Same, exact same. My life is a... Uh, <coughs> it's like a 24-hour repetition. Mm. I do the exact same things yeah. almost every minute of every day. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, mm, what do I do? I have to have coffee in the morning. Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah, we are creatures of habit. We are creatures of habit. Yeah. Yeah. What time do you go to sleep? This is a topic which is intriguing to me. Well, you know the how I go sleep. I know we te- what time. We're texting I'm, bringing, I'm bringing this up. Now. <laughs> What, what time did you go? To, did you go to sleep? What time did you say to me? Uh, oh, I'm going to bed now. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you should do podcasts at 10:45 no. <laughs> a.m. Adam. <laughs> what time do we normally shoot? Um, afternoon, isn't it? After, yeah. No, sometimes like, usually it was an evening. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It was an evening. It was an evening. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, in terms of what time I, uh, so last night you texted me at nine. No, I texted you at nine p.m. Yeah. And, and you went to sleep at 9 p.m. Yeah, I said in the voice note that I sent you, I said, uh, I said, uh, what did I say? Should we play the voice note? Did I say anything? Uh, I, I say can't any- remember. I don't think you should play it. anything private. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's risk it. Um, what did I say? I can't remember. Yeah, because I think, it was funny because I, like, I, I think I offended you. I think I've ended you with it, right? No, no, <laughs> I'll you tell you why. You said I'm going to hit the hay. <laughs> you, you, said no, you, said, you said it's a weird expression. And I was like, that's hit the hay. You I've said, never I'm said hit the hay. Right? Hold you on. Said, you said, I'm going to hit the hay. I was messaging you in the morning. And I was like, I looked at the time and I was like, this is 9 hit p.m. Hit the hay. I mean, I've, I've never said hit the hay. You said some some type of catchphrase. Let's listen, let's listen. This is not a good idea. I don't know what you said. Okay. Which one was it? It was the latest no, one. I'm going to hit the sack now. Oh, <laughs> <absolutely. Yeah. laughs> hit the sack. That's even, that's even weirder. Sack. That's even weirder. I'm going to hit the sack. <laughs> I'm going to hit the sack. What does that even mean? Okay, so I sent you this message at 8.56 p.m. <laughs> that's even, it's getting worse as we go on. Now, I'm going to hit the sack now. Who starts a voice note with the word now? <laughs> No, that's no, no. I'm gonna hit the no, sack. no, Adam. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the sack. Nobody starts a sentence that with the word weird. now. That was weird. That hit the sack. What does now. that mean? I'm just surprised that's like the word, the sentence of the word now. Why like, are we moving past hit the sack? That's a strange <laughs> term. Yeah, I say hit the sack all the time. Right. So, which is more weird? <laughs> hit the hay or hit the sack? No, hit the sack is normaler in my book. In my <laughs> all right, here we go. Now, I'm going to hit the sack now, so I might not see your message until the morning, to about Fajr time, so, but you can assume that I'm happy with whatever you say, because if you say 9 o'clock, um, well, I can get to the office as early as 9.30, so if you say 9.30, that's ideal for me, um, <laughs> otherwise... Let's Bro, you could tell I was tired. Yeah, you could though, definitely tell you. It's 8.56, yeah, I mean, it's 8.56. For example, you can do... Uh, midday that works for me yes yeah, so any whatever time you say I should be good for especially I think you said you can do the morning-ish time so 
Um, <laughs> I'm so tired. Yeah, anytime it's... you say, just assume that it's fine for me. If it's if it is an issue, I'll let you know by the time you're awake. It's um, a very low voice now. But I'm, I'm pretty much because you can pretty much confirm it. Just let me know, inshallah. I'll check my messages again in the morning. Jazakallah khair. Now, <laughs> what's really funny is the voice note that you sent back because after what's I listened to your voice, I was like, oh, did I did I say um, something to offend him? I'll tell you why. So what did I say? No, no wait. What did, did I say something rude? No, no. You didn't say anything rude. You didn't say anything rude. I don't think I ever said anything no, no, rude. No, no, no. no you've that never said anything rude ever. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get back to you. Um, hope everything's going well. You're going to sleep very early. Inshallah, everything's okay. <laughs> you were concerned about I was concerned. Me. I was like, like, you're going to sleep very early. I think everything's okay. I was like, you, oh, what's, what? It's very early. It's <laughs> I can, yeah, I can do. I'll be up for just time anyway. It's, it's like eight. It's like, some am it's like 8 a.m. So it's, um, it's I'll right. be up around seven anyway. So, um, I can pop down. Just let me know how long you think it will be. If it's in an hour. So anyway, uh, the thing that I thought that I might have... It was the fudge thing. So I said, mm -hmm. uh, you'll, I said, um, I'll be. I'll send you a message in the morning. Yeah. Um, at fudge time or something. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you'll get it by the time you're awake, right? Yeah. And you said, yeah, I'll be up at fudge time. And I thought, oh, maybe I made it sound like I'm like assuming that he's not going to be up at fudge Oh, I said, no. Like, oh, no, no, I'll no, send no. you a message at fudge When you wake up, obviously you're going to miss fudge oh, yeah. I'll, I'll say, you'll hear it. <laughs> no, I meant, I meant, I, I knew that, I knew that if I'm going to sleep at this time, yeah. That there's a very high likelihood that I'm going to wake up before you, yeah, and that yeah, I'll, yeah, you'll, no, as you wake up, you'll wake up to a lovely message from me. Exactly. And I'm did not, you? I did. It was. It was. A, it wasn't a voice note. It was a text, it was a text note. Yeah. Um, but no, that I did not get that impression at all. What did it say? So, um, so I said. What, what? How did I end my voice note? I forgot. You. I just said. I'll see you. In a, I, I'll just pop over, we'll do it in and out, inshallah. That's all good. Um, have a good sleep, bro, inshallah. It's best to be in the morning. <laughs> you were concerned about my sleep. I was concerned. I was like, have a, have a good sleep. Like, <laughs> that's a good, that, I, I love saying have a good sleep to someone. Yeah, that is quite nice. That's, that's, quite that's nice. very loving, yeah. Have a yeah. good sleep. Because sometimes you like, you never wish someone, you have, I know you say good night, don't you? Mm. Yeah. What's weird is that we were growing, when growing up, we were taught to say, um, Shubha Khair. Shubha Khair, yeah. Which, um, I never knew the meaning of, mm. but then when I started learning Arabic, I learned that Saba al Khair means, you know, good morning. So then I was thinking, are we? So obviously, we, because we, our mother tongue is Punjabi. So I'm thinking, have we twisted Arabic and we're saying good morning at night? I don't know the answer, but I think mm. that um, perhaps in Punjabi, maybe Shuba with a, sh a sheen mm. might mean. Night always saying it wrong, mm. but I say it to my kids now. Even yeah, so you're just carrying on the tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to. You, you have must. to. What do I say? Night. What do you say? Do you say night? No, I say shabakh. Not even in English. To my kids. No, no. It's, I just say it. I say everything else in English, but that has to be said in. <laughs> I think I say I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Like there's not even a good night. It's just like <laughs> I'm going to sleep now. Do you sleep? Uh, as soon as I jump do you sleep? Are you, do you sleep first? No, never. Oh, okay. I'm always last. Even in family, household, yeah, it's always last. Because really? I'm watching TV. That's really games. annoying. It's terrible. It's a really bad habit. What's up, what's up, what I went to sleep about? Half past 12. Terrible. Last night. I wish I could sleep at 8.56. <laughs> that is the... That it, oh, how many hours of sleep did you get? Uh, I got about uh, seven or eight hours. That's terrible. It's amazing. No, but you should have... You could have... You could have maybe... You can wake up at 7, 7, 7 a.m. Oh, not me. I woke up today at uh, 4.45. Is that is Fudger even on then? No, it's not. What? Why did you wake up at four forty-five? Really nice to be honest. Waking up at that time. It's I, dark outside. Imagine. Like, can I tell you something now. that you, that is going to be uh, the biggest regret of my life? Is <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't think I should say this. You know, I what know I please say? think about it because <laughs> no, I'm not going to say. It. Okay, excellent. <laughs> You're moving on. Let's talk about hit the hay. I mean, hit <laughs> no, the I'm going to say it. Okay. Do you want to know what happened, bro? Today. <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on. Today. Go on. <laughs> Why am I saying this? I might, I can cut it out. Okay. I don't regularly do this. Okay. I d I've never done it. This is the first time I've done it. <laughs> okay. But when I, was, when I woke up today at 4.45, um, <laughs> both of my kids uh, ended up going... So one of the boys had woken up. That's what had woken me up. Mm. Uh, I was due to wake up at 5. My alarm was set for 5. Uh, but uh, one of the boys had woken up and it woke me up. 
his mum was dealing with him, but he woke me up and then I was like, I'm up now. And so I was like, even better, I can be up even 15 minutes earlier than my alarm. Mm. And so the, he had then, so this is Khalil, he'd fallen back asleep. And Zachariah made some noise in his room mm-hmm. when Khalil was crying because Khalil was crying when woke up Zachariah. Yeah. So there's a panic moment where I was like, oh my gosh, like it's 4.45. I wanted my morning for myself and now my boys are up and that's just going to be annoying because I take care of the mornings. Mm-hmm. So that panic had subdued when both of them went back to sleep. Like they'd kind of cried when they both kind of went back to sleep and I was up. So now I'm awake. Everybody else in the house is asleep. It's 4.45 a.m. <laughs> I walk into the living room and I do like a fist pump. <laughs> hold on, what? <laughs> what did you do? Hang on, hold on, hang on. I did like an air fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> to who? To who? To Everyone's, asleep. Everyone's asleep. <laughs> Everyone is fast asleep. I did it to myself. How did you do it to yourself? <laughs> what, you, what, you just went like this? <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. No, I did it a lot that's, more aggressively than that. That's so weird. That's really bad. I don't know how, de- how dare you even reveal that information to the public. I can't believe I've even revealed that. I was what? so happy. I was like, yes. Was it like. I, it's full on, yeah. Oh my God. I mean, both <laughs> my feet may have left the floor. Did you do a little jump? Uh, <laughs> did you do a little jump? I, as I did it, I was like, why? Why did I do that? <laughs> Um, I did that. That's truth. In what direction did you do it in? Were you going somewhere? <laughs> or was it like what was, was it just, euphoric moment? It was and you were like, like, oh my god! <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I just hit me with that. Oh my god! I don't know. I've what to never say. done that before. I don't know what as to soon say. as I did it, I was like, I said to myself, nobody can ever know <laughs> that you did that. <laughs> you told. You told. I just told the whole world, thousands, yeah. thousands of people. That's, um, um, that's and then <laughs> and then guess what happened after that? Did the kids wake up? Both the boys woke yeah, up. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Both the boys. I mean, you had a few minutes of fist bump happiness. You've, you've had enough time up. to enjoy that moment. I did nothing in that time. I got a fist bump out of it. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, sorry, not a fist bump, like a fist in the air. Did you fist bump it? means like that, doesn't it? Yeah, it's no, like, no. It's, like it's like fist a, like. Did you make any noise? Did you go? No, it's silent fist bump because I didn't want to wake the boys up, obviously. So I guess there was noise made. From the small jump and the oh. fist going through the air. Yeah, they wouldn't hear that. Yeah, they wouldn't hear yeah. that. So there's a slight noise from yeah. that. Yeah, that's um. So then the boys woke up, yeah. and uh, and then the morning was very busy, man. Boys woke up early today, bro, man. And then uh, sometimes they, they, my my boys are early risers, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, their general wake up time is like you know, Khalil wakes up at five thirty, five thirty six. Zachary wakes up. Between half six and seven, or half six and half seven. So, but they both are quite early mm. birds. But um, yeah, the morning. Unfortunately, I didn't get the morning that I was after, which was a nice, peaceful, serene morning. Mm. So, uh, yeah. do you go outside in the morning? Oh no! So, so the first part was actually okay, not go not, not back to this, please. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just I just remembered why I did it. It wasn't only because the boys were asleep, but it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was also because I managed to get over seven hours of sleep. And still be awake at four forty-five, and I was like, "That's amazing!" I was so proud of myself. Seven hours isn't that great? You, get, I mean, it's, oh, it's a a, on average. But you, why don't you? Oh, I don't understand. Because let's say I slept at nine, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's seven hours, right? But I woke up four forty-five, right? But I count that forty-five minute. I don't count that forty-five minutes because mm. that's a buffer period for me. Because I texted you at eight fifty-six. Is it realistic that I was knocked out by nine? Probably not. Maybe it took me 10 minutes to get to bed. Maybe then I was falling asleep. So mm. I'm, I'm counting that. I know that it wouldn't have taken me 45 minutes, but definitely within that 45 minutes is covered. Not so I can guarantee mean. that I definitely got... A sleep buffer, yeah. Seven hours at least. Mm. That, okay, seven, seven hours is a good amount. Of, but you could get you could easily get nine. No, no, I can't because boys. Ah, oh, man. On a, on a good day, they'll wake up at like, let's say, uh, six... Both of them make me work on a very rare day. Let's say they both woke up at six thirty. I'd still need to be in sleep by ten thirty. Mm, that's true. What about if you you talk about total hours of sleep per the day? So you have a nap. If that's a good point, but I don't nap, man. I can't nap either. I could. I guess I could, <clears throat> but I I don't get an opportunity to nap. My my days are so full on as soon as I wake up. I can't, I've got no time to nap. I feel like well, I'm just sitting here. I should do something. Um, what do you think about your time in terms of baraka? Like, um, I was thinking. I said to my friend the other day, maybe I don't mm-hmm. have baraka in my time. Like. Um, I as soon as my eyes are open, I know I have so much to do yeah. until my eyes close at the end of the day. Yeah. I was thinking that's not right. 
But then I was thinking, actually, maybe that's because the time that I would have to chill, I sleep, mm. right? Because uh, I clearly I sleep quite early. And so I was having this conversation with Only yesterday and I was saying that, because we were talking about Barakai in time, we were talking about how some mm. of our like teachers and stuff, yeah. they're so busy. Yeah, if you call them and you have a two hour conversation with them, they'll have a two hour conversation with you. Yeah, exactly. I think there's so much Barakai in time yeah. and they're so busy. And, um, and it, it actually, I think that the reason for that is because I, I remember Sheikh Tim once saying, I think it was Sheikh Tim, who said, be a person who gives, who is eager to give your, who is eager to give other people uh, their rights so you give everybody their rights mm. but you don't expect any of your rights yeah, that's to you like and if you he said if everybody was like sure. that we'd be amazing people yeah. and so you're never having expectations either so I, I suppose that's maybe what they do like someone's called me they have a right to call me and for me to counsel them if they need to and yeah. stuff like that yeah. Uh, but I was saying to my friend that I think I'm going to change my schedule mm. because <coughs> I do think that by taking my entire evening for sleep yeah. I'm not giving people their rights like friends I like see, um yeah. I because I'm like okay I wake up with my boys go to work come home dinner with my wife like sleep mm. right so I'm like well then if I'm always like so I have turned down many an invitation because I'm like no if I don't sleep early my kids will wake up I start, I'll have like, like I have to get around seven hours sleep yeah. to be able to function right and all this and then I'm like maybe I should be more relaxed with it because I could mm. sleep at um twelve. And wake up at six on a rare occasion and get six hours and still mm. function. I know I can yeah, function off that. Could, so I need to be more relaxed mm. because I do have the option to wake up at six in the sense that, um, you know, technically speaking, there's no reason for me to be up at four. My, my to be transparent, my wife like mm. takes care of the, the boys in the night, like if they wake up at night. So I don't need to be up at 4.45, right? Um, yeah. That's so maybe I can, I, as I was saying only yesterday, maybe I need to be better at actually being available about in the evenings like mm. if only he hits me up as like yo bro it's 8 p.m do you want to go out i shouldn't be like no that's yeah. quite late yeah. <laughs> yeah. but it is late it is uh, yeah it in is, some ways it is but i see what you're saying like imagine you become so you can easily get into the routine of like, everything's late i'm tired yeah and you literally just become pessimistic you stay at home and you stay at home and, and you, you become boring and horrible yeah and you don't <sighs> become like People enjoy being around with you, mashallah, right? I don't so think so. I think that I'm actually really negative, Nancy. <laughs> Do you think? I'm going to change that, yeah. <laughs> okay, I see what you mean. I, I because, oh, it's late. Oh, go, go. Oh, like, that's what I'm yeah. like. That's a horrible person to be around. I can't be bothered sometimes. I get very late. I think you, you just become, I become lazy. I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered. It's far. Oh, I can't be bothered. Even just like, oh, I don't want to. Uh, it's just, it's not good. It's not a good way to be. Um, and like, yeah, give people your rights because people probably want to see you, want to be around you. And if you just go, like, nah, 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 you're going to be like, okay, fine. So, yeah, people yeah. be like, okay, fine. Also, maybe they'll be like, um, th maybe there's like a touch of like uh, arrogance with it. Oh, I see, I see where you're coming from. Maybe even if you're not being arrogant, but like you'll come across arrogant. Mm. If someone's like, never asking, or if like any time somebody, any time Faisal wants to link, it's according to his yeah, time really. or according to yeah. his requirements. It has yeah. to be at his house or something. Like that. Yeah, that's that It'll is quite. Him. Yeah, and I see what you mean. Yeah, you know I mean, um, I guess just put in the effort. I mean, it's just like, yeah. but life's difficult. It's really hard to balance trying 100% social life, work, family life. Yeah. Hobbies that you enjoy. You got, Something's got to it's difficult, decrease. It? It's really difficult. I don't know how you... And then sometimes you have like a good routine. And then sometimes then it's just like, well, I want to do something else. I want to be more spontaneous, do something else. Um, it's really difficult. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to change that, That's inshallah. A good idea. That's a good idea, yeah. inshallah. I think I can like start thinking about bed around 10-ish maybe. Yeah, t tennis is a good time. Yeah. Tennis is a good time. And if I sleep at 12, you know, so don't be, time. like, annoyed by it. It is what it is. Yeah, on a Friday, maybe. No, because you still got to wake up early every day. I do wake up early every day. I don't mind waking up early. I, I like wake. In fact, I, I want to wake up early. I hate mm. sleeping in. But it's just that I want to have a good sleep as well. Yeah, true. Right? You want to have an efficient sleep. Yeah, efficient sleep. Efficient sleep. Seven yeah. hours is great for so, me. No, is <laughs> Seven it, hours is fist pump that, worthy. That's right. <laughs> Um, hey, you don't want to see what I'm like on eight hours sleep. What do you what do you, what do you like on eight hours? Oh, uh, the celebration. Yeah, celebration would be insane. I don't know what I'll do. Probably two fist bump. Maybe yeah, I, I do a get small kick. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe like a flip. <laughs> like a flip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do get eight hours every now and again. Mm, that's I need cool. I, I need to go sleep, man. That's why I sleep early. It's like, like seven eight hours is nice for mm. me, man. I know some people can do. Some people are like four hours sleep, five hours sleep. They oh, can do it. Mad, I can't. 
do you have any tactics? If sleep is for the weak, I am weak. <laughs> so you know, people are like, what's that saying? Oh, you can sleep when you're dead. Yeah. Uh, well, what? I don't, yeah, it makes <laughs> yeah, no I'm, sense. I don't understand. I mean, sleep is a ne- necessary part. We're human beings. We if you if sleep. you don't sleep, in fact, you will die. You will die, and also you'll be unhealthy, and you'll be able to work efficiently. Yeah. I'm a fan of sleep. Do you have any tactics on sleeping? Do you count oh, yes. sheep? Or do you count sheep? Does does does, does help me as a classic. But um, I start, I go into the details of what the sheep look like, what farm. Oh, are, really? What That's amazing. Jump, and then what happens then? I'm thinking too much. Right. Do you see? What, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need yeah, to yeah. think sheep PS1 graphics rather than. Do you know what I mean? Ooh, do you see yeah, what I'm doing? Yeah, so yeah, then yeah, I start yeah. with the other sheep. That's not a risk. They're jumping weird. Okay, no sheep don't jump that high. Are they fluffy sheep? Are they, do you know? Do you know what I mean? I I've, I've tried counting sheep. Yeah. I have tried that. It works. It works a bit. Um, I. I tend to. I used to struggle with sleep back in the day. Mm. Now I no longer struggle. Alhamdulillah, with sleep and I'm a And I think that's because I wake up so early, so I'm shattered I'm by the end of the day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't necessarily. However, um, I can't sleep if I'm hungry. No. It's like good. you know, people do this diet where after six p.m. they don't eat. Have you done that before? I. That's a good diet to have, but. Have you done that? I'm sure, yeah. I feel like you would have done that. I, I definitely, I, st- I try to practice that still, but I eat loads beforehand, so then I'm uh, hungry. So if I don't eat, until, if I do the whole <clears> stopping <throat> eating at six o'clock, mm. I'll be hungry again, nine, ten o'clock, and yeah. I would, then it's too late to eat, but then I'm too hungry to sleep. And then, so I, lo- I do like, I do have a late dinner fairly. Like my dinner would be maybe around seven, my dinner is around seven o'clock, boys go to sleep, me and mom and Mrs. will have mm. dinner together. Uh, which is not late and early. I think seven PM is a perfect dinner that's time. A good, that's a good dinner time. Six PM or seven PM. Mm. What time do you have dinner? Um, so that's seven PM. Do you watch television? Do you watch something where you, I can't? I can't. I I can't sit without the TV being on. Oh really? Just because I think it's sometimes background noise. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. It's a strange habit. Well, when you go to a restaurant like date night, you don't watch anything. No, exactly. Conversation. Um, yeah, true. But there's background noise. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, well, something's going on. There's stuff to look at. Because your living room gets a bit boring. Like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. do you look at? It's just like, I guess, the living room. You talk to each other. Yeah, true. You do. But I've got to put something on, maybe open a window. Yeah, yeah. Just feel like a authentic restaurant experience. Have you ever, like, you know people say when you eat, you should uh, connect your mind to your, like, taste, like... <laughs> uh, conscious <laughs> eating conscious so you're like mm, this tastes so I, I smell the oregano I taste right. the peppermint yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just terrible ingredients um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why would you put them both together yeah, um, yeah. well these taste like uh, um, freshly farmed chewing gum yeah, just <laughs> chew, chewing gum <laughs> with a hint of asparagus <laughs> um, I, tr- I, I would try to do that I'm not a food connoisseur so I'm just like this chicken is good chicken I'm gonna yeah. eat it you know what I'd, when I'm really hungry I don't talk at all sorry to spat everywhere I don't talk at all so I'm just like, mm, this is too good. Shush. I'm just going to eat it. Yeah, when the food's good, no one talks. Yeah. Which is that's great. That's very true. That's very true. That's great. Yeah. I, I, I want to consciously, and every now and again I'm eating, I think I'm going to consciously eat right now. And then I don't. Mm. And I eat too fast. Yeah. And I used to eat too slow. I don't know, man. Yeah. But sleep, if we go out to sleep, uh, I, um, I, 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 when I travel, I always take sleeping tablets with me. I've mentioned this many times yeah, in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, that was the first what, ever podcast you, you, ever did. Yeah, you actually gave me the tip as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Did you have sleeping tablets? When it's a long journey, so which ones do you use? Do we want to go inside? <laughs> I forgot what the name was. Um, the Nitol. N- no, it was like a pre- pharmacy prescription. Yeah, but the Nitol have a pharmacy version. Oh, really? Yeah. So there's normal Nitol, like the herbal one. Absolute, mm. absolute rubbish. It just does nothing. Don't even go it is, there. It's like a, it's like a breath bin. And then, yeah, and then there's, uh, you go, you go to the, we've had discussion, you go to the pharmacy, you go past the Nitol, that's um, the, 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 Basic, basic, the, the entry, level, yeah. entry level, and you yeah. go straight to the pharmacist and you say, "Excuse me, can I get the behind the counter nitrile?" And oh, really? then they say, "Yeah," and I think it's like diphenhydramine or something like that. Diphenhydramine. We had this discussion in the first day. But podcast. I, were, I, you went to the doctor, right? Do you think people get bored of our conversations because they're no, exactly it's, the it's same? It's exactly the same. Um, it's usually me just saying how I watch TV and have pizza, um, and, and then coffee, and, and we talk and about then, sleeping tablets, and then and sleeping then, yeah. tablets. Um, Saying that, you know what? Back to the TV thing. I actually, I'm trying to think about. It's actually, I don't think I have the TV. I only watch TV and eating when there's something to watch. Yeah, which is rare. Which is which is quite rare nowadays. I, I, question. Yeah. Um. No, I've lost it. I'm I'm trying to think about what I ate. You what? know what's nice? 
Sorry, go on. No, no, there was something. What were we talking about before we went on air? And right. I was like, oh, tell me about that. But wait until the podcast. We're talking about email. No. We were talking about email, but there's something else. I forgot. Oh, we were talking about mental health. Oh, we were. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when we had it, we ended up having the discussion. Yeah. But um, it, it's worth mentioning, actually, because you, you, you've you been trying for a while to think about ways that mental yeah. health, we can um, approach mental health. And we, then we started talking about the mm. Quran and potentially like uh, how obviously implementing the Quran would naturally mm. help our mental health. And I was saying that people talk often about the balance. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, we've kind of already had that mm. discussion now. It's not worth going into again. We we can maybe go on it. It'll be a pseudo conversation. Pseudo- Basically, it's just the Quran itself is healing. Like, um, like Mike's not. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the Quran- it was watching the, the, the camera was, angle was on me, just like <laughs> w- watching you stroking my beard. <laughs> the the Quran is healing, right? Yeah. So, bringing that aspect, the Quran more is like holistic healing in terms of tackling mental health issues. Is I think it's an important thing. So, I think maybe we should do. I'm trying to think of doing something around that um, because. We can always do things like a little video here, something there to bring people up, but putting practice in people's lives and helping them kind of come to the Quran is a big thing. It's true, it's true. Mm. So 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 what's the what was the decision making behind the hat today? It's the first episode of Freshman, I think, where the you hat. want a hat. The decision around a hat. What does it say by the way? Bridge. It's bridges. This is from a game called Death 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 Stranding. Death Stranding. Um I got um I got this hat because it's from the game. That's it. And I put it on because <coughs> It was a close. It was. What is it? It fits my head. Nice. It does fit your head. Yeah, it fits my head. Like. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Um, but I put this on because I um, I couldn't bother to do my hair, so I'm not taking this off. So please don't ask me to take it off. I'm not taking it off. I refuse. What if I switch the camera off of you and you show me? Definitely not. We'll do it when the cameras are off. Maybe turn all the Wi-Fi off. Phones in a. No. Uh, come on. Right, look. Cameras on me now. Cameras. Is on it me. actually on you? It's on me. I'm not going to switch it. It's just it's on me. Camera four is mine. Do you want to see? You look no. just as normal as you look. No, the hair is not been, the hair has not been prepared. The hair. The hair. What do you do? What's the hair routine? Hair care routine. Um, Normally, I got some little bit of wax, chuck that on there. Sometimes argan oil with a beard. Do you ever I, get the blow dryer out? Oh, the hair dryer. The hair dryer. I cannot be bothered to do that. And then you get too comfortable in the warmth, and then you turn it off and you feel cold. Oh, uh, really? Terrible decision in the morning. Have you ever chucked the hairdryer on before you get to bed so it warms the bed up? Never. We have actually talked about this before. No, we haven't. We, are you sure? No. Have what? Never... Hair drying the so bed? Like, so no. you like go out of the bed. No. Mm. You're joking. And then it gets warm and you jump in. Perfect. Have you ever had an electric blanket? Of course. We have definitely had this conversation. Yeah. I've never had an electric blanket. Have you never had no. a... No. What's an electric the, blanket? It, like? What, so it, it basically... So what I used to Is do, it connected by wire? It's connected to the electricity. By wire? My mains? By... Just like how you plug in your phone. So what if you pull the blanket and it pulls the No, so it out? goes like, okay, so it looks like it goes underneath your bed sheet, so on top of the mattress, then why, and then you put your bed sheet on or the. Oh, it's not an actual blanket they put oh, over no, yourself. It's like it's like a, it's like under <coughs> my one anyway. Why like do a, they call it electric blanket then? Because it's I don't know. So it's not it's not mine. The ones I've used aren't, and they are some of them are I think, but one I use is like it's like bed. I like, see. And you chuck it on like, what I used to do. I went out, went out like an hour before, 45 minutes before bed. I'm like, okay. Well, for you, it'd be like eight o'clock. So yeah. when, when, <laughs> while what, I'm at work, <laughs> when you're at work. <laughs> turn the electric blanket on, <laughs> so I'm on my way home. Four, it's rush hour, four, so it might, be, yeah. it might take me a minute. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, I chuck it on, put it on max heat. No way. And then it's, it becomes like a toaster. It's amazing. And then you just turn it. When you get I don't think I'd like that. It's, it's like, it's, when it's really cold, it's nice. Like now, it's a nice thing to have. But you know what? One of the nice things about getting in bed when it's cold is that the bed's cold and you got to do it and you get you do it and you, like, oh, and, you like, oh, and you wait for it to get warm. Like, mm. you don't get that experience. You get in and it's already warm for you. So you don't do the whole, oh, yeah. you just get in like, oh, I'm in a sunbed. But that's assuming you've made the bed. Yeah. What if the bed is a mess and you just chucked and the, the blanket's been open in the open cold, uh, the open cold air of the, of the world? That's true. Because it hasn't had the mattress hasn't had any shelter, therefore, it's like just sitting on the sofa. Uh, yeah, ge- uh, generally, I feel like the listeners of this podcast make their beds. I agree. I would like to hope so. Otherwise, we've got <laughs> a lot of growing to do as an audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, um, I don't know what to say. Um, electric blanket, it's a good deal. It's a good deal, but it's it's a bit dangerous because you could get too comfy and leave it on. Yeah. Um, 
so that's a dis- that's a disclaimer I feel I should mm. give context to this episode actually mm. um, to be transparent with the audience as to like why we why we're doing this episode I mean obviously Adam is always welcome to Freshly Guarded and he's a regular who everybody loves so that goes without saying but the original plan for this episode was uh, that Adam was actually going to interview me uh, and we were going to talk about the tour and um, so what's happened in that time is we're recording this episode uh, earlier than we are making the decision <laughs> to r- announce the tour or not. It was basically, if that makes any sense. So th- the plan was announce the tour, right? All of a sudden, Omicron comes, which apparently the correct Greek way of pronouncing it is Omicron. Omicron. I was calling it Omnicron. <laughs> what? <laughs> Omni. omni no you like, won't no it's, it's omni it's, it's definitely not omnicron fine so i think the, everyone's pronouncing omicron so let's go with omicron because that's what the prime minister pronounces as well, as well. but i think it's mm. omicron if you're, if you're scientifically greek. oh really omicron, omicron. omicron. Greek, omicron. anyway so omicron um because oh, we, we didn't expect omicron and all that's happened so uh that's obviously got we've gone oh no like do we announce the tour on the week where everything's uncertain but uh, as it stands, I believe that we have announced the tour uh, once this episode's out, which is this Friday. Amazing. Um, because regardless of Omicron right now, uh, the tour is not until 2022, until March 2022, so just before Ramadan. Uh, Birmingham is in Feb. Uh, but um, it, it means that the, the, the tour is actually in about three months' time. So uh, we can't predict what's going to happen in three months. We have to carry on as hoping that everything gets better and also um it looks like things it, it i don't want to speak about data okay. um <laughs> but it i read some data saying that you know <laughs> it's not as the things are actually uh like someone said like there was like there's been like nine thousand cases but there was nineteen thousand this time last year or something like that so that's mm. not, i don't know but uh, we're going ahead with it and we're taking many precautions as we explained in the video that you guys would have seen and so we've released or uh, the plan is it feels so weird talking about this right now because i don't know if we've released it or not but let's assume we have released it there's a three-part documentary that we were filming uh, we were filming like this big documentary uh back when we were originally doing this mm. tour and we actually got really we didn't get into it much into it at all because um uh, because uh, then the tour got cancelled and so then we had this great footage from one day where we did this like one day of shooting of this great documentary. And then we had all of this iPhone footage uh, from around that time. And so I was like, well, we can't use that documentary footage anymore because it was just one day footage and then we never carried it on. We also never carried on filming anything on our iPhones really after COVID was announced because then everything went to like craziness. Mm. But I was thinking we do have all this footage that is quite interesting and it would be good to release it. And also I was, I was thinking, how do we release an advert for this tour? Because the advert for the tour was so good, the poem that um, Sid did, that I didn't want to create a new advert Mm. because I still love that one. Mm. So I was like, how do we announce the tour? And I was like, well, why don't we use all this really cool, interesting footage and put a three-part documentary together where it's like two, it's like three 10-minute videos uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and um, announce the tour like that. Uh, And then at the end of it, on the Friday have like kind of like a fourth part which is about the tour but like somebody interviewing me about the tour and then uh i don't know that plans all gone out the window but i believe we would have released the documentary by now and we are going on tour in 2022 inshallah and so we could kind of have that version of an episode if you have any questions about the tour you can shoot them over to me and uh it's good that it's kind of unscripted because uh, you would probably ask the questions that anybody would ask because you have no e- extra knowledge on the tour. Indeed. So, should we talk a bit about the tour? Let's talk about the, what is the tour. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question to start with, right? Yeah. So, in 2019, we did a, a celebratory episode 100 live event for Freshly Grounded, and the idea behind that event was just to celebrate 100 episodes. And we were never, we had no, no intention, I don't think, to ever do another live event. Mm. But then the live event went done so well, bro. Like we sold all 400 tickets, That's you so know, well. very quickly, alhamdulillah. Um, and then we did the event, and it was really cool because it was like a variety show that was that didn't sacrifice any morals and I think people enjoyed it and I didn't I don't think people knew what to expect like whether it would be a live podcast or, or what and it ended up being this thing where we had fun and games and it's really really cool mm. so after that I was like well 
we could do a live event more often because uh, people seem to enjoy it. I enjoyed putting one to get on one on together, and and also it kind of like uh, it's this feelings that you get from a live event that you just don't get anywhere really? else. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I got you. <coughs> like just being in front of a live audience and seeing the people who actually support the podcast and allow it to continue. Mm. So then we did it a second one in 2019, but this time we did it in the Aldrich Theatre, which is obviously this big Western theatre where they mm. normally do Tina Turner, the musical. Really? And we built up wow. a really good relationship with the Aldrich. It's bang in London West End. It's in Holborn. And no, it's not, it shouldn't be that a small Muslim podcast can do an event in London's mm. prestigious yeah, Aldrich yeah. Theatre, right? And... Um, and we did, alhamdulillah, and that went really well. And so then I was like, you know what, how do we go bigger than the Aldrich? And I was like, mm. it has to be a tour. And so my plan is, uh, or has been, to uh, to do the tour. Sorry, I'm getting this phone call that is like fairly important. I'm thinking like, oh, what do I do? But I'm going to stick to my rule <laughs> of no answering phone calls in the podcast. <laughs> and I'll bring them back later. But so then, so then um, I was like, the only thing bigger than the Aldrich is a tour. Mm-hmm. So then we planned the tour in 2020. Yeah, and then obviously COVID. We had, we had started planning. We actually employed Kareem for the talk. People will know now. Kareem is such a fundamental part of Freshly mm. Grounded. He oh, works right. full time. He moved his life o- over from Spain to work at Freshly Grounded full time, right. and his job was going to be full time running operations of the tours. Oh, sorry, of the live events, because mm. that's how much of importance live events were going to have in oh, Freshly Grounded. And then Alhamdulillah, Qadr Allah, Umar Sha'afal, the it didn't happen. And it opened up a lot of opportunities for us because we became panicking because live events were going to be the way we monetize Fresh and Grounded. Mm. If we do live events, it would if we do a few a year, it would make enough money for Fresh and Grounded to run, to pay salaries, to pay for equipment mm. and to run the project. I never wanted Fresh and Grounded to be a charity. I always wanted it to be a business. And so, you know, that would have done that. Mm. Then what happened is... Uh, live events got cancelled at 2020 mm. and then it was... A, we were thinking, well how do we now monetize more than anything? Mm. Like, yeah, we haven't got an event and um, it's the right thing to do. And at the time, I put out an announcement saying that we're not doing any event. And a few people commented and said, maybe that it may be, may have sounded like we were making the decision to not do the event. And we were trying to sound more righteous than we were, but actually we were forced not to do the event. Oh, but that wasn't true. We We actually did decide not to do the event mm. because... Um, it hadn't at the, the time. At the time I shot the video, mm. it hadn't been announced that you had to stop doing events. But oh, we had a conversation wow. internally and uh, decided that it was not the best thing to go ahead and do this event when everything was uncertain. Mm. And Omar kind of said to us, and we've actually got this footage in the documentary. Omar said, um, "It doesn't even seem like the right Islamic thing to do, even if you can do the event mm. to do the event, yeah, I got because." You. Um, we didn't have any knowledge at that time of how to prevent it. We didn't have vaccines at the time. Mm. Now we have a lot more precautions we take, face yeah, masks, vaccines, stuff like that. But at the time, we didn't know how bad this was going to be. Mm. And, it, and it got really bad. So anyway, we cancelled the event. We postponed it. And then it would we postponed it originally thinking we'd do it in July. So we postponed it in March 2020 thinking July, everything would be fine. That ended up becoming September. September became December. And now it's yeah. been two years. And we're doing it two oh, years wow. after it was originally planned. Wow. March 2020 it was planned. Now it's happening March 2022. Mm. And um, but in that time, alhamdulillah, because we were like, oh no, we don't have the tour. We genuinely were at a point where probably Fresh Uganda wasn't going to exist anymore because as much as we love it and as much as we've had conversations with so many people who have said, people who we respect who have said, mm. look, we're not going to let you stop FG. Uh, it also comes down to a point where I have two kids and a wife yeah, true. and Kareem came over here to work full time and stuff like that. And if we can't, and we have now we have editors and stuff like that. Mm. And so... And it got a point where it was really scary, actually, because we were like, maybe the project will stop, but I'm so passionate about the project. Mm-hmm. I feel like I haven't even scratched the service with what I want to do with it. Yeah. But the live events were kind of our ticket to financial freedom as well. And so, alhamdulillah, we, we one thing we did do is we always kept our trust in Allah and our tawakkul in Allah. Mm-hmm. And we thought about this game idea. Mm-hmm. And um, we spent, we didn't just want to do it as a, as a, uh, uh, like a, a quick win, yeah. even though we knew we needed to monetize freshly grounded, mm. we thought if we can um, do the game properly, it could be good and it could yeah. be long lasting. And so we spent a few weeks uh, writing each and every question, thinking about it from an Islamic perspective, thinking about it from a fi- um, financial, thinking <laughs> about it from an Islamic perspective, thinking about it from an emotional perspective, mm. uh, 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 the impact it would have. And then we wrote all these questions out when we released the game, right? And then Alhamdulillah, since we released the game a year and a half ago, I don't think there's been 
I, I, I'd like to think there's not even been one day where we haven't made a sale of the game. I think literally not, every day, if not, then most days. But we literally get daily daily <coughs> sales of the game, alhamdulillah, uh, for the most part, since the year and a half. The hype hasn't died down. Wow. And we haven't really promoted it much, but it must be word of mouth. We're assuming people play with each other and then they... Like oh I'm gonna get Tell a copy. People, right? So the game has been really, if I'm honest, what's carried freshly grounded through financially um, wow. since we've since we've uh, launched it. And then we started current events. We started making plans. We were able to invest some of our money into new projects mm-hmm. like those things. Uh, we still haven't got ourselves out of the clear because just relying on the game is not ideal. Uh, and so we've got this tour coming up. Uh, and the idea for the, after that tour, we're gonna re- we're gonna reevaluate and say okay. We obviously can't rely on live events right now as a secure yeah. income, but we are going to carry on with this one. We have um, sponsors and stuff as well that we um, agreed with like two years ago. And then after this live event, I do want to do more live events. What's bigger than a tour, I think, is international. Yeah. I do want to do an event in Toronto, Canada. We have got a following there. Ooh, uh, yeah, so I think Allah. if all goes according to plan, maybe next year we'll head there. But we have to have a think. Our live events, what we're going to do after this one. Mm. And maybe this will be the last ever live event we do. Who knows? Uh, and that's also a reason to buy a ticket. Uh, yeah. But I I do want to make it really great. Mm. Um, but that's where we're at, basically. In And so we're in this weird position of professional grounding where we, we have to make some changes. And we have been making changes. And we've the one thing that I don't think we've done great at is be able to implement our Patreon as well as we can. Mm. Patreon, um, the founder of Patreon actually recently came on a podcast called Colin and Smear and he was talking about it and I believe that he mentioned that there's some creators making like a million dollars a month wow. on Patreon. No, sorry. Yeah, either a million dollars a month or a million dollars a year. But even if we were to go with a lower number of around a million dollars a year, mm. although I do think it was a million dollars a month, but like if we, even if we go with a smaller figure of a million dollars a year, then you're making um, around for argument's sake, $80,000, $88,000, I think, or something like that, 80, yeah. let's say $8,000 a month. Mm. Like, that's the potential. And uh, we know creators in our space who are a lot smaller than obviously ha- doing the millions, but they're still able to sustain themselves by providing content, so not free money, but providing content for their patrons. And we've never been great at that, and that's what we're talking about as a team right now. Like, how can we provide value to patrons? Mm-hmm. And we can, like, perhaps it's... Um, uh, uh, seminars that we do on things we've learned or mm. having extra episodes of the podcast or right now we're thinking like the most popular episodes of the podcast are like the more Islamic ones mm. like the, our teachers and stuff like that Tim Humble Yahya Rabi well. stuff like that but we don't want to overdo those episodes on our on Fresh Grounded because we want Fresh Grounded to be uh, kind of a one size fits all uh, and we don't want to um, make it strictly Islamic lessons and stuff like mm. that but if those episodes of the podcast may be doing some more of those on Patreon. We haven't quite f- figured yeah. it out, but um, in a nutshell, that's the tour. And we've been able to get some dates for February and March. That's and so we're going ahead with that. And we got, like I said, we're working with the venues for COVID mm. um, safety and our our staff will all be wearing masks. If the government require it, then our audience will be wearing masks. Mm. Um, if the government require it, then we'll do extra checks and stuff like that. But hopefully it's a very smooth process. Um, Even in terms of capacity, like our Manchester uh, venue is, like we're working with all these venues, we're we're doing capacity slowly. So, um, you know, we're releasing some tickets and we're seeing if we are able to release more, we will. If we're not, uh, then we won't. And therefore, that's another reason why it's important to buy a ticket now because it's almost you've got nothing to lose. You buy a ticket now, you secure your space because it, it might have to be a small event. Mm. Uh, when I say small, maybe like 400. Mm. Um, and then uh, at worst case scenario, you've got your ticket and inshallah, things only get better. If they don't, obviously, um, we've got everything in place for like, you know, uh, refunds or uh, uh, with a London event, you get automated refund. Mm. With Manchester and Birmingham, you have the choice to keep your ticket, yeah. uh, which is also, uh, and then for the for the for the postponement, because regardless, this tour is happening. It's just about when, and it look is it, it's like ninety nine point nine percent happening now, uh, in this March twenty twenty three, inshallah. And the benefit of being able to keep your ticket is being transparent. We're a small company. If mm. two thousand people asked for, uh, like all of their money back or a ticket back straight away, it'll be a lot harder 
and we'd have to like pre- reset everything for the event yeah. than for people to hold on to their tickets and we just release the event later. So that ended up being a monologue, but that's like the whole story of where we're at with the tour. That's amazing. Um, tell me about what the lineup's going to be like in the events. What have you got planned? You've got something cool planned. Okay, so um, do you know Anton Dex Saturday Night Takeaway? I do. I've watched that many times. Fine. So... <coughs> are you going to do an entrance like that? <laughs> no, they're okay. not going to do but it's hard to explain my vision for the tour. But yeah. the reason I say that is because here's two guys who, if you talk about like the non Muslim world for a second, mm. they've captured the eyes and the hearts of like the British public mm. and they're just presenters, yet they've been able to put on this show that like wins awards year in, year out. Yeah. And the reason is, is because people tune in for them right so when you say what is a special guy event my idea is is that you go to the event and it's not what you watch it's how you feel mm. when you've left the event and i want you to feel inspired i want you to feel like you had a really good laugh and i want you to feel motivated to mm. to to move on to the next step in your life uh, but i don't want it to be a comedy show i don't want it to be an insp- uh, a ted talk yeah, i don't want it to be a business uh, yeah. uh, event right yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to capture all of those feelings. And so how I plan to do it is to have all of these different elements. So a performance is like this event is going to start with a performance, which is you'll see in the documentary we speak about it. But Sid's advert basically is going to be performed live on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to be start with a performance, but then it's also going to have um, hopefully a, a keynote by an industry leader. We've got some people in mind right now, uh, but like some sort of inspiring keynote yeah. talk. Um, then it will have like, uh, audience inter- interaction and surprises mm. and stuff like that uh, and then it will have like some some like freshly going regulars who are playing like uh, like games and, and having fun on stage um, but less of the interview style stuff because yeah. I, I don't want to I think interviews are great for this but mm. for live events people want to be inspired and motivated and energy right. so just a lot of energy a lot of fun uh, perhaps like the, the like Islamic version of like a fun like uh um, f- and next Saturday Night Takeaway meets uh, the Royal Variety Show uh, meets Freshly Garnered uh, that like kind that. of energy yeah that sounds cool um, how long do you reckon it will be? Uh, the show? Y- three hours whole, three hours? yeah will there be snacks? Uh, there will be snacks yeah so in the Aldrich Theatre in London they have their own uh, like a bar we mentioned yeah. to them last time that obviously not to serve alcohol so um, in the Birmingham venue, there's a Costa inside the venue, but I don't know if that operates. Mm-hmm. But regardless, um, there will be uh, like some stalls, I believe, at the Birmingham event. The Manchester, as it stands, no snacks. So I don't know. <laughs> I think you're not going to want to come Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> you can it's like a three hour like a theatre performance. Yeah, it's not even that long. Um, what would you say is the... What's the main? What's the headlining act? You could call it. What's your, like your? What's like the thing? Like this is this is like the main thing. I actually think that um, it's you keep a secret. Yeah. Well, no, not necessarily. I, I I think that it's hard to say because I think we have something that ticks Everything. every box. Hopefully, yeah. uh, but I think that the headline part of the event is actually uh, the audience and mm. interacting with the audience. I don't think we've done that enough in our events before. Yeah. But our audience means so much to us. I think we realise that now more than ever during COVID, we realise that now more than ever whenever with everyone backing us with buying the game and enjoying the mm. game and stuff like that. So uh, the headline, I think, of this event will be a lot more of uh, interacting with the audience. Uh, and, and that's not to say we're going to make anybody feel uncomfortable. We're not going to be pulling random people out of the audience. Yeah. It'll be like, but we will interact with them. Uh, we have this idea of like bringing an audience member on stage and giving them like a fresh guy and a quiz, and like there'll be Ooh. prizes and stuff like that. So there's all these different ideas that we have. We want to have some regular prizes, like you know, a box of um, halal sweets, mm. but then we want to have big prizes, like big, big prizes. So a- if any companies, by the way, are listening to this and they want to provide those prizes, um, we would love that as well. So can you give an example of what type of prizes you're thinking? Of? In my head right now, I've got a trip to Umrah. I was going to say that's yeah. an amazing I've got a trip price. to Umrah or holiday or something like that. Uh, but we have to see. And right now, the budget doesn't allow for that. But we also have a great network. And hopefully, uh, we might be in a situation where, for example, a sponsor can provide that. And then sure we can like give that. So That'd be amazing. This would be like a yeah, p- massive highlight of 
of the year almost. I think so. I want it to be a big celebratory event, like mm. our episode 100 was. And I, I think like we've learned our lessons in our events moving forward. I think episode 100 was really fun. Mm. I think Operation Excellence was a bit interviewee. Mm. Even though it was fun, it was a bit too interviewee. And yeah. I realized that we had all these great guests, but we had like Saf, who's Super Saf, who runs uh, over a million subscribers on YouTube. You could talk to him all day. And then we had Aleem, who we've never had on Freshly Grounded before, who has so much that we wanted to ask him. Uh, and um, Josh, LaMonica. And then we had all these guys, but we had them all on the panel at the same time. We had 15 minutes right. because events are timed so tightly yeah i said like you can't doesn't do justice well i would like to interview each one of these guys for two hours mm. so i think i and then we wanted to also allow time for audience q a it just didn't work out and so i think i want to do less of the interviews and more of the fun yeah yeah i i actually i want to come to one of these i've never been to a freshly grounded event so yeah i, I actually think that you're going to be on stage for this time so I might, what, i'm going to give you the tour dates and maybe you travel with us what what would you want me to do Adam, you're I'll fun. Carry, I'll carry the bags. No, to the no, car. no, no. I, you're gonna be on stage, driver. I want to have at least <laughs> one segment with your stage. What? Do you, honestly, I don't understand. I, honestly, maybe one I'm of like, those audience. <laughs> maybe you can. Maybe we could do Adam versus an audience member, and it could be like a, a freshly grounded <laughs> quiz because you're gonna fail. Hundred percent gonna fail. And it's no, not, not even fair. And then the audience member will win. That'd be nice. Okay, okay, okay. And then maybe you get gunged. No, I, oh, I, I'll gunged. venue here. Okay, can you do a gun? Uh, oh, our, our, our venues will not let us do that. No. Gun. What is gun? Sorry, I'm. Ge- what is gun? That's a very good question. Is, there, is it paint? Remember, do you remember that show Fifty Fifty back in no. the day? No. What was the show that did gunge? I I, I actually don't know. It's a funny word, gunge. Yeah. What is gunge though? You're right. I think it's just like a liquid. A, this type of coloured water slash. It's thicker than water, it's isn't it? Thick, it's like a doughy. Watery. Maybe we could just like uh, pull milk over you or something. Or we could, yeah, we could. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a fan of dairy. Maybe almond yeah. or, or oh, fine. Coffee mate. Coffee. Just get coffee. Coffee mate. There yeah. you go. Loads of powder. Powder. You dip powder. yourself into like a yeah. black coffee and it will become milky. I'll just sit in there and yeah. it's a great day. Yeah. Um, I would. I would be, I'm, I. I haven't been to an event in a long because obviously COVID. I'll be excited to go to an actual proper event, inshallah. Yeah, I've been to. Um, I've been going to events. Obviously. Uh, uh, alhamdulillah because I'm um, fully vaccinated uh, when you're fully vaccinated you can pretty much get into any event mm. because some events require it some don't but when you have it uh, then you've covered your bases for all events really and uh, it's been quite good actually but we've got an event we've got a tickets booked so I found another podcast um, there's another guy who does this um, he's uh, he does like a live podcast event I'm intrigued to see um, how he does it because I, I think that he does great uh, he does great podcasts and stuff so that would mm. be interesting uh, but live events are great man and I think that in our community mm. we don't have uh, like we've got great like events with regards to like talks and lectures but I don't yeah. think we have a great night out event where yeah. <coughs> it's actually really important I say this where it's for adults Right, and yeah. what I mean by that is, you can go, you can get Islamic events with that are for adults, that are for like lectures and stuff, that are like for a serious topic. Yeah. But, but or you can have a, a, a Islamic event that might be a bit more family oriented and fun. But then there's like it's families and also kids. Yeah. But is there an event right where you could go out like how you would go to the comedy club or to the theatre yeah. or you or to something else that is like kind of an adult event yeah. right it's mature it's um it's a night out that you can um actually plan a night out with your girls yeah. or plan a night out with your with your boys and um and and feel like it's that the event respects you. Yeah, I've got you. Right? I've if I'm going you. to like a family fun fair, I'm there because my kids are going to enjoy it. I'm not, you know, if I, there's a stool that does like powdered donuts, I'm in. But uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I've got you. So I think that what we're trying to do here is say, look, I'm 27. Um, Sam's 32. Um, so we start, obviously we started Fresh Guys together. You're 30. Exactly. Oh. On the DOT. Uh, oh, oh my God. So we all. I believe that all of us are the age that um, our audience are. And mm. so we want to put an event that we would want to go to. Yeah. That's the idea. That's, you know what? I think that's a great... There's not enough um, outlets for us to be entertained, have fun in a halal... Like a fully like halal way where, as you said, like the event respects us. Like, you know what a massive difficulty is? Like when you go out somewhere and you have to pray and you've got to find somewhere to pray and it's like... Oh, this is, this is it's it's it makes it so difficult. But if, for example, a freshly grounded event, 
you're gonna, you're you gonna, don't have to worry about exactly. praying. You don't have to worry. Well, first of all, this because this this event coming up is in kind of it was it called spring yeah uh it slash winter because february mm. is there's a february show as well and we we've actually been able to do every event after maghrib so it's the amazing. good thing is is that you don't have to worry about your salah you'll pray mm. your salah and then you'll come mm. because we found um with our last event like with all which there's no space to pray mm. there's no space bro wow. it's like you go in and it's the big theater it's like 1200 seats it's the Ooh. whole thing's taken up by the seats there's one little foyer and then it's the big theater yeah it's like you know when you go to like a football stadium and like you kind of put your ticket in and then the stadium just opens up in front of you there. it's yeah. not like there's a lot of rooms and stuff so mm. um we've always tried to make sure it's, it's yeah with, with the first grand event you'll always make sure that it's it's either like with our first event we had a prayer hall mm. with the second event we made sure it was outside of prayer time so yeah. we always do that you can be rest assured that there's never going to be any alcohol it's not going to be sticky smelly alcohol obviously um everything's halal the entertainment's halal yeah. there's there's no like dirty jokes no lewd jokes mm. there's no um nothing that hopefully makes you feel uncomfortable yeah. no loud music uh, but at the same time but normally when you take all of those elements away then it also takes um in theory, the fun away, right? Like, Not necessarily like the alcohol stuff, but you get where I'm coming yeah. from, right? Like the ten, the events that you see marketed towards non-Muslims do have all of those elements. Yeah. The ones that the non-Muslims respect and love, but. Yeah. First of all, we're not trying to be like that. Yeah. We're, not, uh, we're, we're very comfortable being Muslim. Mm. We're, not, we're not trying to emulate non-Muslims. Mm. But what we are trying to do is raise the standard for Muslims. Of course. And say, you don't have to go to, you can go to an event where you're super comfortable, mm. but also it respects your intelligence yeah. and you get a bit of everything out of it. it. We've not marketed it this ever as a family event. Never. Yeah. Not because we don't like kids, but this is not an event for kids. Like, And I don't think we will ever do events for kids because we don't know how to. Yeah. We can only ever do content for our Above age. You. Yeah. Or, or, or people... Uh, or, or our audience members mm. so uh, you know we have alhamdulillah we're blessed to have audience members that are in their 30s in their 40s uh, and we love that mm. um, even in their 50s like our event manager for our first event was um, I'm not going to reveal his age but <laughs> older than us mm -hmm. and so, right, so but, um, my point is that we don't know we can't always keep on track with people in schools like, yeah. I don't know what the latest um, fad is Neither do I. and we can't do it like otherwise it would be like an event that's like TikTok yeah. event and we, we don't know how it works yeah, anymore yeah, yeah, but exactly. we know we know our experiences and uh, we're now family men and we're know. starting to have kids and mm. you know we have like come out of uni and we're working mm. and we know other people are working our colleagues are in their 30s and 40s mm. so we, we're around that more yeah. so I think it's important to do an event where you're being your authentic self I think that's a really important thing um, I think people are enjoying it more people um, I don't know they they like move towards that when they see something that's authentic and something that's that they can empathize with they're like that's interesting that's like oh that's like me i like this they're like me type of thing um even though we talk about we i i don't bring anything exciting to this chat but if people like it i'm like okay you want no, to you hear do, me talk but my, my favorite probably. episodes are the ones, the ones with you alhamdulillah man. but it's not like i have a like a unique selling point of like i'm an expert in this right do you know what i mean right, but right. i'm um I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> no, you just, no, I'm just like, like yeah, on a completely yeah. separate topic, I am <laughs> invaluable. <laughs> I don't okay, know. I do. but, um, where if, are we if, going if, with this? You know what I mean? If people like it, I'm gonna learn. Yeah, that, that's, that's all good. Um, but yeah, I would. I that sounds amazing. And I feel like even when you talk about things like Netflix and all the things you watch and the things that we kind of um, take in and, and like anything we kind of I don't know what the word is ingest into our lives. Um, th the Muslims never have. We never have that our own thing like yeah right? we, and we're like when but we need to so this is just another example mashallah yeah i think there's a fine line between like imitating that which we don't necessarily need to imitate yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but also creating alternatives and That's options true. and our own mediums mm. which is important as well so it's yeah. like quite, quite a tough balance, it is tough balance so well. under armor adam huh um i could say something. i saw your tracksy bottoms Jim Shark. Yeah. I saw that. I didn't comment on it yet. But no, but uh, I was just thinking because I've not seen you Under Armour. So are you an Under Armour fan? But no, I got. I went to. Have you seen it? What's it, what's it called? Is it Bista? Yeah, yeah, that? Bista. Insane, mashallah. I didn't love it. I went there, everything was cheap, and I was like, buy everything. I didn't buy it. I bought like two t shirts. But it was like, t shirts are expensive. I had a bad experience there. What did you. The toilets are nice. <laughs> 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 the toilets are very nice. No, but uh, they are. They are very nice. No, but. Uh, the 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 the, 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 the it's, it's lovely to look at. Like the buildings are nice. It is. The, it's clean. Mm -hmm. But I mean that like 
I don't know, because I, I was expecting, because everybody talks about it. And then I went there, it's like, I, I didn't find anything super cheap. It's too expensive. Hmm. It, it, yeah. Like, uh, I didn't not, buy anything. You didn't buy anything. No. I bought, I bought, the thing is, I just bought t-shirts. I didn't buy, did I buy a t-shirt? I, I think we, I think we bought a, a crepe. You bought a, a crepe as in French delicacy. You bought one of them? Yeah, a dessert, yeah. There was like a crepe uh, van. Out of 10, how much was it? I mean, out of 10, Ooh, it was ages ago, man, but it was good. It was good. It was um, good crepe. I was going to say... Um, Are you a crepe man or a waffle man? Oh, waffle man. Crep, like, crepe for me, that's a pancake. Do you know? Do you see what I'm going with Yeah. That? Like, I'm a waffle man. Like, I've become crepe man recently a bit more. I feel the waffles are just overused now. Yeah, true. I don't know. Like, it depends the quality of the waffle. Like, sometimes you get some high quality waffle. Like waffle my start. I haven't had that in a long time. Are they, is that high quality? I waffle? think so. I mean, like, you know when the, when the waffle's a bit crunchy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When it's a bit soggy, you're like, oh, okay, yeah. this is a normal waffle. Um, I got you. I mean, they sprinkle some powder. What's that powder? Sugar powder? Yeah. Oh, man, powder, powder donut is the one. Is that, is that I th- nice? Yeah, I do you know what? I think one day me and you need to go to the um, the Krispy Kreme uh, factory in North London. There's a Krispy Kreme factory in North London? Yeah. Are you lying? We need to go together. By the way, we <laughs> have never <laughs> been out together. <laughs> Every time we've met, it's we been a podcast. Have we haven't. No. Other than when we met f- at Iman Channel, we always meet for the podcast. We do. Which is great because we have great conversations. Yeah. But we do. After t- we'll go at eight. You know, you know what? We'll go at eight. I, now that my new schedule, <laughs> right? I'm not sleeping at seven. Any day, bro. After seven, mm. me and you go on a motive. We'll meet yeah. and we'll drive to North London. <laughs> Honestly, okay, bro. Okay. Okay, after down. 7 p.m. After 7 p.m. Interesting. And we'll go to the Krispy Kreme factory. If it's open at 7 p.m. Definitely. I'm going to check right now. <laughs> we'll go to the Krispy yeah. Kreme factory and we will watch how the donuts are made and then we'll buy donuts and we'll eat them there. We can have it with a coffee. And then we'll bring the donuts home. And we'll have it with a coffee. Yeah. Let's put this in the Let's put it damn in diary, diary right <laughs> now. <laughs> I would definitely go to that first. Adam. Blew my mind with it. It's Let's North put it London. in the diary. Let's put it in the diary. Um, searching the internal mental diary. First, I'm looking at uh, the uh, availability. Okay, cool. Right, so okay, have you have you never been? Uh, years ago, I was probably a kid. I saw a McVitie's factory the other day. Basically, yeah, what up in um uh, in in Hosden. Yeah, I was like, what? That's yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Didn't know that. Um, so Krispy Kreme, the the oh, there's a tour, bro. We could go on a tour of the. Do- Interesting. I'm liking this. Anyway, forget the tour. Let's just go to the factory. So, um, is there an evening tour? Krispy Kreme. There's one in Watford, but I don't think that's a factory. That might just be. Oh, actually, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. Krispy Kreme, Watford Trade C- City. That's a lot closer. Um, let's see the pictures. Um, your, your facial expression doesn't, 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 is not. Yeah, it's just. It's not I don't showing, think it's as. It's not as glamorous or. Glamorous, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, should I we think go to a factory of some kind which they make something? What about Krispy Kreme though? Okay, I think it is right the Watford one. However, only problem with it is is that it closes at seven p.m. That's, that's and that's the time. Well, who goes to sleep at seven p.m.? Will you go to sleep an hour after? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, right, so let's let's check Krispy Kreme in uh, Enfield. Because I think Enfield is the factory. The largest factory in the area are definite for the freshest donuts. Kids love the factory and see to see how it's made. Yeah? Well, t- that day we're going to be kids. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what time it closes. Come on. Oh, bro. What? 10. 10 p.m. 11 p.m. Yeah, 11 p.m. No way! Bro, let's do it. When are we doing it? When are we doing um, it? I guess in the new year. What? I'm Bro, come. I want to show you the picture, but you have to hover over because I don't want to take the thing out. Look, this is a sneak preview of what we can, you can expect. Look, that's how big it is. Bro, look at it. You watched them. All right, let's put this in the diary, bro. Um, we'll, we'll set up a date. We'll set up a date. Fine. Text me. I'll text we'll you. figure out a date. Figure out a date. Um, okay, that's gonna be a fun day. Um, I think which one I'm gonna get. Mm, I don't know. Well, it's up to you. You can watch them be made. So. Yeah. So Under Armour. I'm not. Yeah. So I just got this because it was cheap. I do, I do have no really brand affiliation. Um, it w- there was a shop there. Went there. 
t-shirt t-shirts for me if it's more than like 12 pounds i'm like it's a t-shirt we have definitely talked about this before yeah we have but i feel reluctant you know I mean? to talk about this now because we're about to release a t-shirt under fresh ground and it's not going to be 12 pounds no but that this is 12 pound as in as in like a Go on. everyday <laughs> t-shirt a freshly grounded t-shirt is different it's merch this is merch like yeah. this is just an everyday t-shirt like i would just chuckle under a hoodie do you know what i mean it's a great t-shirt mm. i got this gym these gymshark things in uh black friday on the website yeah 25 quid you think that's much there's a lot i don't know so quite good for tracksuit yeah like tracksuit tracksuit. bottoms did you get a matching expensive these top? days no no, no. I, don't wear, I don't think i don't wear matching tracksuits i, like I used to I like a matching tracksuit, which is non-hoodie based. Yeah, yeah, I can go with that. Sweatshirt I can go with that, and yeah. t-shirt. Yeah, 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 I can go with that, I can go with that, I can go with that. I feel like... Hoodie tra- based, I feel like at 30, really. Yeah. Sweater, t-shirt based. Long sleeve t-shirt based. I mean, even that. I think hoodie yeah. based is a bit too much. I feel tracksuit track bottoms are too tight nowadays. I'm going to put that out there. Yeah, I, I can't deny it. I can't yeah, deny that. Too, I, I, they are a bit too tight Yeah, now. I can't deny that. I can't deny that. Like slim fit, yeah. like a good fit, like a when you see someone with a suit. Sometimes when you see someone with two, it's it's like a good fitted tracksuit. Bottoms is a is a good thing. Yeah, too tight I, is a bit. I can't deny what you're saying. I I I. Yeah, I can't deny. Yeah, it. It. I can't it's uh, it. I, can't I, I d- so, so sometimes when I browse the internet, and look at um, the tracksuits available, super slim fit or slim extra slim fit. I'm like, this is. This is this is the f- yeah. It's a bit too much, and you know it, the tracksuit's not supposed to be slim, slim fit, in my opinion. Yeah, but they, yeah, I guess the joke designed to be comfortable, right? It must be comfortable. Um, yeah, I'm just doing a, like a spanner in a mix there. No, you are right. I can't deny it. I can't say I don't have tight tracksuits. Yeah, but I shouldn't. I, I definitely don't have super tight. Like, I don't buy. Like, well, I mean, super skinny. like super super yeah, skinny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, most leggings. of them are like a more. They fit. Like leggings, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Most of them are like. Fitted, I yeah, say. I like like tapered. Yeah, tapered. Yeah. That's what I mean. Those are I like those. I got a couple of those, but um, a lot of them are less like this is not comfortable. To yeah, wear. yeah, yeah. Um, but a good tracksuit is nice. Yeah, I'm ha- like a sweatshirt tracksuit match. Yeah. Do you shop for clothes much? Or you? How long do they last? I, like, for you, a good few years. I don't because I waste money on other stuff, such as computer parts. Yeah. And how often do you switch out your phone? Do you get your phone every new release? No. Do you have a iPhone? I have an iPhone XR. Okay. Which is the the cheapest one at the time. Yeah. I think I might have that. No, you got, you got, no, you got, what you got? I got. What is that? Where does it say? General, know. about. I have an iPhone 12. Mine's older than that. Is it? It's just because I'm like, I just don't need the upgrade. And they're expensive, phones are expensive. They're very expensive, yeah. I remember back in the day at school, like, it'd be really embarrassing if September came and you had the old iPhone. And then I remember a, a, a key transition in my life when, I was waiting for the new iPhone to come out. Mm. This is when I was now an adult. I was waiting for the new iPhone to come out just so I could buy the old one for cheaper. It was like the iPhone 11 was released. I was like, oh, I can get the iPhone 10 now. And I bought the iPhone 10 because they knocked like 200 quid off it or whatever. Because, and I thought, um, because after the iPhone 10, they all started being the same. If you have yeah. the iPhone 10 or if you have the iPhone 13 right now, unless you're like really into that kind of thing, you could function incredibly well of mm. both. Yeah, you can. Unless you're like, yeah, like, but I, I, I use my phone all the time, like all the time. I go, my work is so online. It's my whole life yeah. is online. Yet I've never felt, oh no, I'm using an iPhone 12 and not an iPhone 13. Yeah. The only reason I even upgraded from the 10 to the 12 was because I think it had like broken or something. And it gets, it gets quite slow. But I mean, like, yeah, I they do get slow. Yeah. I feel like phone technology has plateaued now. Like, yeah. You could get any phone, any, any phone now like a newish phone and they all do a really good job of what they do. It's like, for example, if you get a new car, most of them are going to be really, really high quality. Most yeah. of them are going to be high quality. So we spoke about cars last episode. Remember? We did. We did. Um, I did, I spe- did I speak about the Panamera? Yeah. Panamera? What did you speak about? Panamera? Oh, oh, I thought I said my dream car is a Panamera. Is it Panamera? I think so. Panamera is a very nice car. It is. It's, they're quite expensive though. It's a family car. It's a family car. They also do the estate. I think it's like, a, it's more. Kayen. Est- no, the estate Panamera. Pan- no, it's not the estate Panamera. It's the new shape Panamera. Oh, it's very know, nice. I saw the advert for the other day. The, the new advert? electric Mercedes. EQC? No, EQ. I think so. EQS or something like that. EQ. E- yeah. Maybe EQ3 I or something. Saw, I saw that on. <sighs> Man. Yeah. That looks amazing. It's um, it's expensive though. Wow. They're all expensive. 
Oh, it was just stunning. It's an, did you see an advert or you saw I saw an advert. Real, I saw it in real life. No. I think I saw it. Are they life. out now? Yeah, there's an electric Mercedes out. No way. Yeah. So, but the problem is, is um, charging infrastructure is quite difficult. Yeah, it is right now. Yeah. If you go in, I always, yeah, go on. If you go in a stick somewhere, you go for a nice drive through the woods, which people do, I assume, um, and you run out of charge. That's difficult. That's a tricky situation. Yeah. I I always think that it's hard unless you own a house because yeah. I rent. Yeah. And I don't think I could convince my landlord for me to put a charger in, right? charger in my driving space. Mm. But then someone else is like, oh, I'll ask because uh, like that would be a huge benefit for her. And also increase the house value. Of the yeah. But I would take the charger with me. <laughs> Can you do that? But would she pay for it? I would have to pay for it. Yeah, you take my car. Yeah, I would yeah. take it. Um, but then you're drilling in the into the maybe you parking spot and stuff. I think there's a massive discount. I think it might be fifty percent. Yeah. So that's I amazing. That. But also the government will hopefully start doing more community charges. Yeah, the government um, right now. Somebody was telling me about it. My Uber driver. Mm. He said that the government subsidised, like you said, either fifty or thirty percent of your charger. Mm. It's um, it's like the great time is to do it now, right? Yeah. I would love an electric car. Um, but I feel there's some going to be good. There's some going to be good ones coming. Like every major manufacturer has got something out. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. It is. Mm. Adam, thank you, man. I really appreciate Any you time. giving me your time. Uh, as always, I always appreciate it. And uh, uh, it's uh, it's yeah. Mm, it's a yeah. It's one of them. It is a bit. Even though I woke up early, I think I I think <laughs> I plateaued early. You think? Yeah, I maxed out at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. was my peak of the day. I think I'd, I'm pretty much there now as well. Yeah. But it's been yeah. lovely. It's also a grey day. It's a grey day. It's one of the meh days. Yeah. But it's... Uh, and also, you know when you have your breakfast so early? Yeah. Then you've like... Then it becomes like... You get hungry early as well. You get hungry. Then you do a second breakfast maybe. Yeah, which is odd. Then lunch, you get a bit d- distorted. Then dinner, when do you do it? Yeah. Ugh. There's a snack. Before you know, you're just like you're just snacking away, and then you, you're you, you snacking do, yeah. away, and then uh, you're just in a weird place. Uh, next thing you know, you've cancelled your gym membership. Cancel gym membership. You're you're just sitting there snacking away on some Krispy Kremes or McVitties. Then you know. decide to go on a Krispy Kreme factory tour. Yeah, which definitely I'm thinking about the date. Um, Please it let, it promise me because a Muslim can't break his promise. So live on camera. Okay. Promise me that you will message me with a date. For us to go, just you and I, in a car, drive to North London where <laughs> none of us live. <laughs> okay. I live in West and you live like kind of Central West, don't okay, you? I can't live in West. Yeah, we live very close to each other, I feel. No. Yeah, West. We're both West. Fine. We're both Westish. So one of us will pick the other one up. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to head an hour into North London. Okay. At very past, post 7 pm. Post 7 pm. And we're going to watch donuts be made then we're going to eat donuts together with coffee and then we're going to bring donuts back for our families okay inshallah let's do that um i i promise i will send you a day great with that being it. said guys thank you so much for watching uh this episode of freshly grounded if you um are a fan of this kind of thing check us out on patreon but more importantly we have a tour coming up guys and we would love for you to join us we're in Birmingham on the 5th of February, Manchester 11th of March, London 15th of March and potentially Canada uh another day like maybe like september or something uh if you're interested or if you want to buy a ticket please do freshlyground.com forward slash tour if you haven't watched documentary yet go give it a watch and we will see you next week assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh